What are the first two bottles of whiskey that you would buy? I'll explain the parameters of that question right after this quick intro. I'm Captain Mike. This is Whiskey and Literature. I do whiskey and book reviews, and tonight it's whiskey. Two things, or a couple things about the video before we get to the video. First of all, I'm not in my house. I am in a hotel, again. I don't have any of my fancy shirts on. I haven't brushed my hair or washed my face. This is just me, it's Mike. If you're wondering about the video and the audio, I don't know how it's gonna sound. I am on my phone. I don't have my camera. I don't have microphones. This is just me and my phone. And it is what it is today. And last thing, I'm gonna try and get through this without crying. I've been awake since about 3.30 this morning and I've just alternated between despair, hope, determination, frustration and anger. I, I got to Enterprise rental car this morning, two hours before they opened. And by the time they opened, there were 85 people in line behind me waiting for a car. I got a car and that's great. But I stood those two hours in line. I was mostly weeping that entire time. Anyway, let's get, let's drink some whiskey. Cheers guys. So usually when we talk about what's the first two bottles of whiskey that you would buy, we're talking about like your brother turns 21 and he wants to go buy a couple bottles of whiskey or your friends who drink vodka and tequila, they want to try the good stuff and they know that you drink whiskey and so they come to you for advice to see what they should buy. Or perhaps your friend is a Mormon and is no longer Mormon and they want to sin, so they come to you again for advice on whiskey. So that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about your whiskey collection. Just think about it for a second. Think about the bottles that you have at your house right now. These bottles that you've stood in line for, for hours sometimes to wait, to get to score that great bottle, or just that, that great daily drinker that you love to drink and you get home from work and you're like, ah oh, man, just have a nice pour and just relax a little bit. Or These bottles that you have, think about those bottles, okay? Now consider this, you go to work on Monday, what would you do if you came home from work and all your whiskey was gone? And so you have to start a collection of whiskey over again. What would be the first two bottles that you would buy? Or perhaps you live in Florida, you live in the Gulf Coast, and let's say a storm comes by. Maybe the storm is called Helene, and you're inside your house when Helene comes by and you stack your couches on top of the other couch and you're sitting there while the water is coming into your house and it comes up to three feet inside your house before it starts to recede and go away. So now you've had all this water in your house and you think about your 350 plus bottle whiskey collection. All those open bottles, even if they weren't in the water, they're toast. The sealed bottles, maybe questionable let's say they were high maybe you keep them but let's say all your whiskey was gone what are the first two bottles that you would go out and you would buy i bought two bottles of whiskey today i actually had these bottles in my cart for a couple of days and i just went and picked them up today so these aren't my answer to this question but you think about it for a second. If all your whiskey was gone, you're not some new whiskey drinker, you've been drinking for a long time. What are the first two bottles that you would buy? Think about it for a second. This is a new glass. It's kind of cool. All my other glasses are at my house. I don't have any with me here in the hotel. I have two bottles of whiskey. That's the predicament that I'm in. We were in our house Thursday night. 
We thought we'd be okay. We prepped. We prepped as, you know, as much as we thought well, we could and what we needed to. And we decided to stay in our house. And uh, uh, it got to the point where you realized that nothing you did made any difference. Nothing we could have done made any difference. And uh, got to the point, Mrs. Captain had a great idea. Let's stack our couches on top of each other and sit on the couches in the living room while the water's coming up. And I'll put a picture up here of what it looks like to be sitting on a couch when the water comes up. And it, it got, to, and it's kind of hard to see in the picture and I'll blow it up, but you, uh, you can see the water through the window outside. It's about six inches higher than where it is inside the house. And that's where it peaked. Um, luckily for us, it didn't go any higher. And, uh, you know, just kind of angry at myself for putting us in that situation. But you know, we're talking about whiskey here. So I don't know. We're going to, they closed the island. We left uh, yesterday and we couldn't go back last night or today because the island was closed. No access as they're cleaning up. And uh, we're gonna go back tomorrow. The island's open so the residents can get over. Um, we we spent uh, Friday cleaning up the house as best we could. We went uh, ripping the flooring out. Uh, I didn't spend much time in my back room. Didn't have the time. I didn't bring any whiskey bottles from my house here. Um, there were bottles on the floor floating around. Um, Anyway, we're gonna go back tomorrow and see. But I bought two bottles today, and this isn't my really isn't my answer. But I'd love to know what, like what would you do? Your 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 whiskey is all gone. You know, you're not a new whiskey drinker. You've been drinking for a long time. So all the oh, they're all gone. Boom, you go to Total Wine. You know, I mean, you're not gonna go stand in line or go find some big pappy or something. You're gonna you're gonna go. You, all your whiskey's gone. You're gonna go to Total Wine, buy a couple bottles, or your favorite liquor store. What would they be? Well, here's my two bottles that I bought. And we're not gonna deep dive them today. One's opened, and I'm having some of it already. I've never had this whiskey before. Um, I've done their the distillery tour, and I went to their uh, distillery two weeks ago, and I bought another bottle. Um, but it wasn't this one, but I bought this bottle because of the other bottle that I bought. All right, let's, let's just, okay, here's the bottle that I'm drinking right now. It's Bullet. I think it's backwards in the camera. Whatever, it, we're, we're just we're just making this video today. I'm gonna go ahead here, it's because the light's different. All right, Bullet, 12 year rye. So why did I buy, why did I have this in my cart? Okay, it's it's kind of a long story, but not, I got nothing else to do because whatever. Um, International Wine and Spirits uh, competition, the Bullet 10 Year Rye won Best Rye and, uh, for American whiskeys. And so I wanted to go buy the 10 Year Bullet Rye. And I couldn't find it here locally. And I was in Kentucky a couple weeks ago and uh, went to the distillery and bought the Bullet 10 Year Rye. And I was talking to the guy and I was like, why do you have the 10 year rye when you have a 12 year rye? And he said, well, the, the 10 year rye is replacing the 12 year. So I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna go home and buy the 12 year rye because I mean, isn't 12 greater than 10? I, I, I don't know, it's older. Um, I haven't opened my bullet 10 year rye. I don't know if it's safe or if it's garbage, nothing but garbage. Um, but the good thing is that Bullet 10 Year Rye is going to become, you know, a shelf stable product. So we'll all be able to have it. I'm excited to try it um, and see why it won the International Wine and Spirits competition. But this 12 year, I've only had a couple of sips of it and uh, I'm a fan. Now, of course, when I, I'm not doing the specs and stats and all that sort of stuff today. Um, but this is a 95.5 Rye. It's MGP. So... Bullet is from Kentucky, but they source their rye whiskey. So you're buying Bullet Rye, you're buying MGP Rye. This is 100% MGP distilled in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. 
12 years old. I think that's a great age. I love MGP. I, I mean, I, I'm, High West is my jam. And uh, 38 bottles of High West in my house right now. All those open ones are probably, they're probably trash. And when I'm crying, I'm not crying about the whiskey, but kind of, right? I mean, first of all, I'm just exhausted. And uh, second of all, it's just, I just think about all the things we could have done differently and the position that I, that I put us in. Anyway, let's talk about whiskey. All right, so I'm not gonna drink the other bottle. Well, because I only have one cup. I bought this at Total Wine too, because it looked cool and it was the most expensive glass for whiskey that I could find at Total Wine. And so I was like, why not? I'm treating myself. It's my first glass, my first whiskey glass. And that was my first sip, possibly, of my new collection. I don't think like if, like if you said, Mike, your whiskey's all gone, go to Total Wine and buy two bottles of whiskey. I probably would not, would not have bought this whiskey. But you know what? Um, it's pretty good. Pretty good. I paid, uh, I don't know, my receipts over there somewhere. I'm totally unprepared for this video. It is what it is. Uh, bullet, you know, it wasn't that bad. It was like 50 bucks. I paid 50, I paid about 105 bucks for both of these bottles total. So, uh, anyway, bullet 12 year rye wouldn't have been my first choice, but it would not be a bad choice if you're only gonna have two whiskeys. And actually, these are two pretty good whiskeys. They're very, very dissimilar. So, all right, let's go over the uh, over the second bottle. Man, God, I'm, I'm 12 year MGP, 95.5, sign me up. Second bottle. I also went to this distillery in Kentucky a couple weeks ago. I was super excited. And in fact, I almost canceled my trip to Kentucky because I was gonna go with my friend Kevin. And then Kevin couldn't go for family. And I was like, oh man, I'm just gonna, I'm just not gonna go. But then I got my tour booked at this location and I've been wanting to go there and cause they were, didn't do tours and, but they got it going. And so I went and did, you guys in the know, you'll recognize that right, right away. I went and did the tour at Wild Turkey. And I've done, I don't know how many tours I've done in the past couple, two and a half years. Um, because of the tour guide, and I'm gonna do a review of that tour, but it was one of the best tours I've done in a very long time. And we didn't even do anything. Like, like we, we went at, at the visitor center, we rode to a rickhouse, we talked outside the rickhouse for a little bit. We went inside the rickhouse, we talked a little bit more, we went back to the visitor center, we drank some whiskey and left. And I still think that was one of the best tours that I've done in a very long time. But that full review will be coming up. It'll probably be on my phone too. Why not? Anyway, it, this is this is a funny. I'm actually, as I did a little bit of research after I bought this bottle, um, I think it's kind of funny. But anyway, wild turkey. God, it's, I know I should have put this camera other ways. Whatever. Wild Turkey, this is the uh, Jimmy Russell's 70th anniversary edition. So it looks really cool and guys, let's go this way. Guys are uh, goo goo gaga over this bottle on Facebook. Oh, it's so good, it's it's so good, this whiskey. And dude, I, I love Wild Turkey, so. Um, but here's, here's a brief specs and stats of this bottle. It's Wild Turkey, it's bottled at 101 proof, 50.5 ABV. Does that seem familiar to anybody? Uh, that's 101, right? Now, the specs and stats of Wild Turkey 101 is that it is aged between six and eight years, okay? So they had Wild Turkey in Europe. Wild Turkey's been around, Wild Turkey 101's been around for like 60 years. It's been available in, in Europe, it's been available over there at eight years. In 2013, they aligned the European market to the American market. So European uh, 101 is also now 68 years. So essentially I paid 50 bucks for a bottle of Wild Turkey 101 that is aged five year, eight year, eight years, sorry. 
So this is an eight year 101. Now, normal eight 101 is six to eight. So eight, is that worth more than, more than double the typical price for 101? Because 101 is under 30 bucks. 22 to 25 bucks for a bottle of uh, 101. And I'm a big fan of Wild Turkey 101. And I'm excited about this bottle. I mean, it's the age is not that much different. It's twice the cost. The bottle looks cool. Anyway, those are my first two bottles. I, I don't know that these are the first two bottles technically of my collection. Maybe there's some bottles that are salvageable. I don't know. It's not my priority right now. I have other things. But it is a big financial thing that I'm thinking about. And I'm definitely, tomorrow, I'm gonna go over there and spend a lot of time in the house basically all day that I can, um, looking at things. And we're gonna be in a hotel for at least uh, three more nights as we're figuring things out. We're not gonna be able to stay in the house for probably a month. So um, we dealt with this last year. We had an Airbnb, which we've sold because it flooded twice in three months. And we're like, we're just not dealing with this but this is our home. Um, last year when the Airbnb flooded, not that big a deal because we could just stay at um, at our house, of course. I mean, we we had nothing of ours in the Airbnb. So it was pretty easy to get it mitigated for the uh, flood damage and the mold and whatnot and then get it rehabbed. But then it flooded again right away and we just sold it. So this is our home. I don't know what we're gonna do. We, we haven't figured it out. We might have a friend bring an RV over and uh, we can kind of work in the house and sleep at night in the RV. We're not sure. But it is what it is. But I'm inter interested. Like, like really, what, what do you think? I mean, this is not something that I've thought about. I just thought about this morning when I picked these two bottles up. I was thinking maybe these two bottles are the start of my new whiskey collection. I hope not. But... You know, it is what it is. And uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and get my some of my equipment. I, I don't know how this channel is gonna look in the next couple of months. I, it's not, it's not honestly not my priority. Um, my, my life doesn't revolve around this. I don't get paid. I've never, I've not received one dime for YouTube. They haven't given me one dime. Um, spent $14,000 last year in whiskey and uh, cause I like whiskey and it's cool but uh, guys I don't know don't know what the channel is going to be like um, all my books as well all my books are gone I bought the Count of Monte Cristo today while we were out running around running errands because I'm reading it and I think it's super great but so let us know in the comments below what would your first two bottles of whiskey be if you lost your whole collection tomorrow. That's it for tonight, guys. I'm going to have a little bit more of this bullet 12 year rye and uh, read, some Monte, count, uh, read some count of Monte Cristo and call it a night. If you've enjoyed the video, like it. It's free. Subscribe to see more of my content. But for now, my friends, you know what to do. I hope you're reading something good and drinking something great. Turn those pages and stay thirsty. Cheers.